Welcome back. I'm Wyatt Goolsby in for Lauren Ashburn. Former President George H.W. Bush and former First Lady Barbara Bush are both hospitalized tonight in Houston, Texas. Bush's spokesperson says he was moved to the intensive care unit today to address a respiratory problem from pneumonia. He was first admitted to the hospital Saturday for shortness of breath. The 92-year-old has battled several health issues in recent years. Bush has a form of Parkinson's disease and uses a wheelchair or scooter to get around. Bush's wife Barbara has also been hospitalized as a precaution after experiencing fatigue and coughing. The couple marked their 72nd wedding anniversary on January 6th. At his own inauguration, Bush 41 said he wanted his first act as president to be a prayer. Joining us now is Mary Kate Carey, former speechwriter for President George H.W. Bush. And Mary Kate, I think I speak for all of us when we're wishing the Bush family uh, the best in terms of their health. You know, Mary Kate, it was George Washington who sort of started the inaugural address with the idea of a prayer. How has sort of prayer been a part of inaugural speeches over the years? Well, it's certainly uh, become a tradition started by, by President Washington. Uh, he, he started a number of traditions, uh, one of which was also this theme of national unity and common good uh, under the hands of God. And that has continued for many years. Uh, as, you, as you know, the sort of legislative laundry list does not really belong in the inaugural address. That gets saved for the, the first joint session address and then later State of the Unions. But um, it, this idea of coming together under God's blessings uh, has really gone on for many years. Some, some presidents more so than others. Some are more workmanlike. Uh, for, for example, Reagan's first inaugural, he talks a lot about the economy and, and the Soviet Union, but also has a lot of God in there, too. Uh, so some more than others. It depends well, on the person. Well, which president had the most references to prayer? I would say in the modern era, George W. Bush had the most, not necessarily using the word God or the word prayer, mm -hmm. but, for example, he quotes Mother Teresa. Okay. He, he talks about the road to Jericho. Well, if you're uh, a, a Christian, you know what the road to Jericho uh, is, a reference to the Good Samaritan, uh, things like that. So it's, he don't necessarily have the word God, but it was a very religious speech. Uh, and he, he does what a lot of the presidents have done, Reagan did as well, uh, refers back to a, a line that George Washington uses where uh, he calls God the great author. And so, for example, in George W.'s inaugural, he talks about uh, the author. Uh, we are not the authors of the American story. He is the author, and the story continues. And so it's a very poetic way to acknowledge our, our first founding father as well as God's blessings on our country at the same time. Considering you are a former speechwriter, what advice would you give to Donald Trump as he crafts his inaugural address? So Donald Trump, uh, in all of 2016, the best speech I think he gave was on election night when he spoke about uh, things like the national unity. He uh, wanted to bring the country together. He wanted to uh, t talk about his service to the American people. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very humble. He said, uh, no dream is too big, no challenge is too great. And so as I read that the other night when I was thinking about this, I realized, you know, that, that could be a prayer itself. Uh, and asking for uh, blessings on his service to the country and asking for national unity. So my advice would be to have Donald Trump do what George H.W. Bush did and start his, his speech with a prayer. I think it would surprise people. I think it would be very humble. And I think it's in his wheelhouse because he wrote that speech uh, on election night himself, and he's writing his inaugural address himself. When it comes to George H.W. Bush, you know, you'd worked for him, uh, produced a documentary on, on him. Um, what's your favorite story regarding for speech, for, as far as speeches go, mm -hmm. I think my favorite was uh, uh, he went to um, uh, the, the former Soviet Reunion, some of the republics, on a tour after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And I believe it was in Poland. And uh, people waited for hours and hours in the pouring rain to see him. And, you know, he's not a fan of giving speeches. He'd be the first to say it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he got onto the stage and he saw how long the people had been waiting and how sopping wet they all were. And he took his speech and he ripped it in half over his head, which <laughs> gave him great delight. And the crowd roared. And he said, I'm just going to speak to you from the heart. And he, he gave them about a paragraph on, on the, the importance of freedom and, and why it was so important what they were doing. And, uh, and he loves it. He's got this great picture in his office of the speech in two pieces. One of, <laughs> one of many memorable stories, I'm sure. Not good for speechwriters, but good for him. Yeah. Right. Mary Kate Carey, former speechwriter for President George H.W. Bush. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thanks for having me.